Hey, how's it going? It's your challenger coach Adam Moriarty Isles here to bring you a new video series where we go over some unpopular strategies or picks that were able to climb to challenger with ease and teach you how to play it. First up, we're gonna have the resurgence of Pike Mid, who similar to Kha'Zix gets nerfed frequently but then comes back into the meta a couple of weeks anyways. Before I talk more about this pick though, I will mention that the number one skill you need to have for Pike is of course roaming. Might actually be the only skill he needs besides, you know, tunneling for kills of course, so if you're the type of player who likes PvP over PvE, this is the correct choice for you, so let's get right into it. To start off, let's talk a little bit about why Pike Mid is coming back into high low meta. The first reason is his roaming capabilities are likely the best out of any of the mid laners, better than Pantheon, better than Kiana, or even better than Talon, and in a meta where early game scuttle contests are really common, skirmishes and dragon fights are super messy, he can snowball super quickly and super easily. Okay, this might sound a little troll, but because of his absurd gold income from kills, Pike can purposely over roam to lose CS mid lane to give lane XP to his jungler, which can be massive when, as we all know, jungle players complain about starving for XP currently, so it works out particularly well with jungle champions like Karthus, for example. Not to mention, Pike's all ins and execute damage on his ultimate with accelerated income can catch even the most experienced players off guard, resulting in a lot of solo kills or even multi kills during team fights, especially since any melee mids will not be experienced in this match. Matchup. And we all know how quickly people give up in Season 10 due to how quickly games get out of hand. Even though the meta is slowly slowing down, Pike Mid is still one of those champions who can snowball the fastest out of any of the mid laners due to getting some extra gold off of kills, he can quickly stack lethality. To summarize this a bit, Pike Mid's strengths come from his roaming potential, gank assist or jungle assist, as well as his ability to hyper snowball due to being able to spend more time roaming instead of farming without actually sacrificing his income. Totally seems fair to me. Now I get it, some of you right now might be questioning the effectiveness of the pick, so I'ma just rattle off some stats and facts to back up my previous statements. He currently holds a 54% win rate in Plat Plus and Diamond Plus with a rounded 1% play rate. Fairly impressive, but you know, not super popular, so we can't trust the data too much. But here's where it gets even more impressive. In North America, there are three Challenger mid-1 tricks. In EUS, there are two in Grandmasters, and in Korea, there are four in Grandmasters, with all of them having an average win rate of 58%, and most of them are actually above 60%. Now, that's not a coincidence. The champion is just clearly very strong. Hopefully now you're a little bit more convinced of the champion's strength, so let's go over how to play it by going over the important aspects of Pike mid player's GPIs. Here we have one of the challenger Pike mid mains from NA being compared to Froggen. The key points you should take away from this as a future Pike abuser is, he's got high kills on average, high kill participation, high first blood participation, absurdly high gold difference at 15, in contrast to his absurdly poor CS per minute, which is actually only 5, and his poor damage share at 20. Something else to note in terms of his actual GPI scores are his farming is just god-awful, but due to Pike's alt passive, his general income is still at the top of Challenger, which is the key to the champion's success, as you sacrifice farming time for more aggression time without actually losing any income. And finally, the number one GPI stat that you should focus on as a Pike player is your pick score. Next up, let's go over his item build. Starting items are Longsword Refillable Potion, and for your core items, Tiamat is a must, as it's the only way you're actually able to clear Minion Wave anymore, otherwise it's really painful. After that, you go Ghostblade to help you roam and land your E better, with Dustblade being the last item. It's at this point where a lot of Pike mid players are pretty split on what to buy, but the options become Edge of Night, Death Dance, Guardian Angel, or upgrading your Tiamat into either Titanic or Ravenous. Personally, I like the follow-up of Edge of Night. As for his boots, the most common are mobility boots for better roaming, though you can go Tobi or Mercs if that situation is just way too juicy. For his runes, it's a bit different than what it was in past versions of Pike Mid. Currently, the go-to is Halo Blades with Ultimate Hunter along with the Resolve Secondary. The reason why this setup works so well is it gives him the best chance to win lane, with Halo Blades giving him the best trading patterns as his base AD is really high, so his auto attacks actually are really good during early game all-ins, along with Second Wind and Revitalize to help him sustain in lane with the combination of his passive. And I'll also quickly go over his skill order, which is Q, then W, then E, because maxing E second really just doesn't provide you with any real benefit over having W off CD way faster, which is way more useful in skirmishing or roaming. Pike Mid's got some pretty standard power spikes, but let's go over them anyways. In terms of levels, at level 2 you have an extremely scary level 2 all in, but you know, obviously it's not as strong as Talons, but it's up there. After that, his biggest power spike is actually at level 6, as one of the scariest in the games, with the remaining level spikes being level 11 and level 16, obviously based around his ultimate. In terms of item spikes though, you really want to rush Tiamat out as fast as possible because his ability to push out a lane without it is pathetic and it makes it easier for him to roam. 
After that, it's gonna be when his first two items, Ghost Blade and Dust Blade, complete, which will be his strongest point in the game, especially if you're able to get those early kills, which, you know, since you're maining Pike mid, it probably happened. You do want to watch out, though, when playing Pike mid, as he falls off in the late game faster than what you'd expect, because Lethality items aren't too expensive, and he's got high gold income, so he's gonna hit six items pretty quickly. So if you do not end the game during the mid game, other champions are just gonna catch up to you. It's actually kind of funny, because a lot of the Pike mid mains, when I was looking through their match hit series, have so many games where they have 20 plus kills and lose anyways just because they get cocky and drunk off of their own power. To help you get some easy kills with Pike, here are some of his basic combos to get you started. Right off the bat, we have his standard all-in, which is just E auto, tap your Q, and then auto auto into Wing or walking away. You're gonna want to use this one as an opener for when people are in your E stun range. After that, we have your fishing combo, which is holding your Q, then using E, and then auto auto, and once again, W or walking away, because extended trades really aren't your thing. This one is useful versus range champions, or when you're trying to set up ganks or picks. Next up, we have your engage combo, which is E into R into tap your Q and then W out. This one isn't as common for mid lane, but it can be used to engage a fight with your stun or dive into the enemy team to chase down a kill while still having a way out. We also got your bread and butter chaos combo, which is W into E and then auto Q into R. You're gonna wanna use this one for a quick assassination. And finally, we have the real chaos combo. This one is probably gonna be one of your most common ones for pike mid. Hear me out, you're gonna wait around, Till the enemy is low, and then you're just gonna just gonna walk up and hit R. All other abilities are used to stay in range or escape after the job is done. I am, of course, you know, slightly joking about this one, but it is pretty effective, and you probably will find yourself doing this more often than not. In this section, I'm gonna lay out how to play the laning phase with Pike mid step by step. So step number one, if the enemy champion has a poor level one, you're actually just gonna skill E and all in them. It's surprisingly effective due to your high base AD. Step number two, and once you hit level two, if you can find a fishing combo all in, if not, just focus on last hits while taking minimal damage. Step number three, once you hit level three or level four, really look at the map to see if you can help contest scuttles, as this can be game winning since junglers will tilt really easily if you're the first one to move. Don't hate me for this jungle mains, it is simply true. Step number four, once you hit level six and have Tiamat, it's time to push lane and look for roams, especially to ball lane as it has the highest potential income for you and is close to dragon. Step number five, you can look to fake roam and all in your lane opponent once they waste skills on the wave. Step number six, which is really good if you can pull this off, you're gonna wanna ward the enemy camps like raptors or red and then roam into the enemy jungle to kill the jungler. If you actually happen to be able to do this, it's almost a guaranteed win. Step number seven, and the most important one, beg for ganks. You might have one of the best gank assists out of any mid laner, so if you see the wave of slow pushing towards you, make the call, do not be afraid to use your flash to start the gank off if you need to, it is just that important. Next up, let's go over step by step on how to teamfight on Pike mid. In terms of mindset, it's very similar to Eve with a little bit of Katarina mixed in. Look for flanks and wait a bit until the enemy team wastes some CDs on other people. Or you're just gonna wait for people to get low so that you can swoop in and get some executes. That means step number one will be trying to get a flank whenever a team fight starts, or at the very least coming in at an angle. Step number two is keeping track of the enemy important CC spells in your head before the fight even starts so that you know what to avoid and which abilities you need to wait out for. Step number three, go into the enemy backline once the enemy team has used its key spells and don't really notice you anymore. The combo that you actually use is pretty situational, but the important thing to keep in mind here is to keep at least EW or Flash to get out after you kill someone. If you use all three to get into the backline, it probably probably means that you're gonna die even if you get the kill, so obviously leave yourself an option to get out. Step number four, if you don't see a chance to go in, you'll either need to continue to wait until you get a reset, or if you feel like the fight isn't going your way, you're gonna have to show a little bit of presence in the team fight by hooking the enemy carries away. In that case, the enemy team might start focusing you and you can draw a little aggro away from your team. It's at this point in time that you should do anything in your power to delay the fight, because the longer the fight goes on, the messier it gets, giving you more chances for that sweet, sweet pentakill. Step number five, if you if you weren't able to actually get a flank, you'll need to hook the enemy divers away from your backline and annoy the enemy team as much as possible until the enemy backline overextends so that you can either pick them off or just ult the enemy frontline for some free resets once they get low. Like most of my guide videos, I'm gonna do a TLDR section to make it easier for people to review the whole thing. First up, we have Pike mid strengths, which are kill pressure in lane, strong gank assist, amazing roaming, one of the best snowball champions in the game, and he can sacrifice his farming time for extra map pressure without falling behind in gold. He's got a 54% win rate with one trick presence and high level solo queue across all regions. For stats to focus on when you're trying to pick him up, look for high kills, high KP, first blood participation, and having a very high pick score in your GPI. For his core items, 
items, you're gonna wanna go Tiamat Ghostblade into Dustblade. For runes, it's Halo Blades with Resolve Secondary. Skill order is QWE. Combos are E, Auto, Tap, Q, Auto, Auto to trade. Charge your Q, hopefully land it. E, Auto, Auto for picks. W, Auto, Q, R to execute. And then just R when you need some extra cash. For power spikes, they are level 2, level 6, level 11, and level 16, and item power spikes are Tiamat, Ghostblade, Dustblade, do not let the game go super late. In lane, abuse your level 1 and level 2 all-ins, and then at levels 3, 4, and 5, look to help out your jungler or set up ganks for them. Post level 6, grab your Tiamat and then spam roam to bot lane, or fake roam into killing your own lane opponent. You can also ward the enemy jungle and hunt them down to kill them just to tilt them. It's really, really effective. In team fights, wait on the outside while being as annoying as possible until you can clean up with your ultimate, and then leave at least one escape ability up before going in. That's it for our video highlighting a sleeper pick for climbing. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any suggestions for a champion or player to be featured on the next one let me know or if you just want to let me know how the video could be made better you can put that in the comment section below. As always I'm Adam Moriarty Isles be sure to check out mobileace.gg to see your own stats or check out our other videos on this channel and hopefully I'll see you out on the rift.